Sporting a darker and more mature theme than most Disney films, The Hunchback of Notre Dame doesn't question the ideologies of religion, but the conflictions between faith and inner human urges. My name is Jeremy, and I host Listening to the Movies on 101.7 Civil Radio, or on www.civl.ca. I play classic hits from great film soundtracks, and last week, I made April the official Disney month for my show, and played The Hunchback of Notre Dame. This movie is the 34th animated feature in the Disney library, and it is one of my favorites. It is also one of the first to incorporate computer animation into its overall feature. It follows the story of Quasimodo, the deformed bell ringer of Notre Dame who yearns to leave his personal prison and live amongst the people. However, the fear of being persecuted as a monster and the wrath of his master, Lord Frollo, hold him back. But when he does eventually leave the cathedral during the Festival of Fools, he meets Esmeralda, the beautiful gypsy who respects and cares for him. Unfortunately, she is at war with Quasi's master Frollo for his persecution of all gypsies, and Quasimodo must choose between the man who was cared and raised for him all his life, or the people who are supposedly evil, yet respect him as a human. The cast is well suited with great performances by Tom Hulce, Kevin Klein, and Tony Jai, who does an amazing performance as the film's antagonist, Frollo. From the utter chill of his dialogue to his haunting singing, Tony J is just a fantastic person to listen to. Alan Menken does a fantastic job of associating story and music together as one from the opening song to the final climax. Hunchback succeeds as being one of the more mature stories because of its overall theme. Frollo's hate and abuse towards the gypsies can be related to the Nazis' persecution of the Jews, along with the fact that he is torn between his faith and his natural urges with Esmeralda. The film shows that evil is not just a word, but a way of segregation, and the lack of understanding and patience people have for those who are different are just hard to understand. For example, Lord Frollo's Hellfire song truly expresses his inner conflict and how blind he is to his own evil. The lyrics are deep and horrifying, and it adds a good change to the norm of Disney villain songs. It's also why the guy with glasses named this the number one Disney villain song. While the music and story are good, there are some issues I find with the film. The gargoyles seem to break the norm for me. They are obviously there for the kids and the comedic relief, but they break the realm of their existence. At first they appear to be just Quasi's imagination due to his solitary life. Yet later on, they come in contact with people and even help Quasi in the final climactic battle. Along with quite a silly song that they sing, I feel the amount of time they got on screen was a bit excessive, but this is just a nitpick. Besides these guys and the scene where Esmeralda supposedly dies and then comes back to life, this film is a great achievement. Alan Menken's score is a great listen and helps build the characters in the story to make it dark, unique, and massively entertaining. If you have not seen this film, I would highly recommend it. It is a classic. If you want to listen to the podcast of the radio show, click the first link in the description. I will give a warning, however. The show before me did play a song with vulgar language that did cut into my podcast. I apologize for that. If you want to get in on the show, click here to subscribe. Finally, if you want to see my other videos, click here. Thanks for watching.